let's try this as a start. I usually don't start like this. C4, D4, E4. Let's go with this. I'll try to steer it into uh, maybe some type of an English. Or not. We're going to have a Dutch, huh? Okay. Let's go with this first. And as soon as black is threatening to play e5 successfully, I'll do this. Okay, maybe maybe I could do without this advance. What should I do? Hmm. You know what? Maybe there was a reason to not play my knight here just yet. I wonder if this could be a bit annoying. Notice how if I didn't have my knight developed right away and I went with just g3, bishop g2, this would definitely be no worry to me. It would be staring at a something that's not so great and also I guess if I was one move quicker with going with the fianchetto maybe black couldn't oppose me on the queen side so there we go with the bishop and I, I don't know if I'm so happy about black doubling my pawn so let's attack the bishop and be prepared to recapture with my queen so I have picked up the dark square bishop and is there a better diagonal for him to be on than the main diagonal? Hmm. Okay. My hesitation right there was, should I go b3 or b4? I wondered, I wondered if I could get a little bit more out of this pawn. And uh, I was saying that I wanted to stop this advance. Huh. Ooh, you know what? This is a weak point. And this bishop's unprotected. These two are unprotected, so I'm looking for ways to exploit that. Moving my knight, bishop takes, it's on my rook. I probably just have to recapture. If my rook were moved, I think I could do this move and take here as an in-between shot. <laughs> so I wonder, in hindsight, if moving my rook was better than b3. Is moving my knight still a good idea? I don't know. Let's do this. Let's do this. Ooh. All right, maybe I move the rook and then threaten a knight move. I'm not sure where you should even go. Uh, you know what? I'm still going to go here. We're going to have the bishops. Let me let me think for a second. I'm not going to pre-move that. 307, about a minute disadvantage. I'm pretty sure I just have to recapture this queen here. Uh, it's not it's not quite working out. So my knight also has this potentially good square, and this seems very awkward, queen here, but maybe there's something to it. Because if pawn push I could take here, ooh, knight here attacks my queen and my knight, I'd have to play here and counterattack the knight and defend my knight. I think I should be okay with that. Uh, I'm going to try it. Certainly a very awkward placement for my queen, but how to defend this pawn? Knight here might be needed. But then I could do this, and then they could do that. <laughs> this is getting to be a very critical line right now. I don't know how how good this move is to put pressure on e6. There's also knight, knight here I take on e5 with check. e5 I take here. Knight here. How do I kick that knight out of there? Yeah, yeah, there he goes. <laughs> there he goes, that tricky knight, man. He's still around. Let's get him out of there. <coughs> oh, okay. Look at this guy. What a bugger, huh? He's a bugger. Is that what you were thinking? <laughs> okay. I feel like I'm close to being in big trouble. My queen isn't going to get hit with the fork is she queen here would be threatening mate on h2 <laughs> don't fall for a mate on h2 whatever you do the knight's hit the queen could play here but i have a double uh not a double attack what did i mean to say i i'd have a counter attacking move so i'm not afraid of that i'm not afraid of your queen knight here knight here e5 are all possibilities and also that one wow I'm going to be losing a pawn, I think. 
Wow, those knights are way too crazy. <sighs> I gotta go here. <clears throat> There's a very good move here, and that's it. <laughs> I'm losing my bishop and then my pawn, but maybe I could get counterplay against the C pawn. This, of course, was all calculated on my part. All of it. I'm getting him back. I'm going to rip the heart out of the queenside strike. No, he's not the heart. He's the heart. I'm, I'm str struggling to get my pawn back. My king is exposed on this diagonal. I don't like that. Not at all. So the knight could be supported, but I could still kick him around. Would my queen be getting trapped? No, after she takes here, she's threatening to grab another pawn. This knight needs to go. Get out of my house. My house are these four ranks, if you did not know. Hmm. Pawn here. Could take. No, I'm, I'm getting the pawn back, I believe. I do have some concern about my king position. No, not anymore. Not, not anymore since d5 is here. I don't have to worry as much. I'm not getting trapped. I'm on the knight. Okay. I think I have to take. And let me just centralize my queen. That seems like a good idea, doesn't it? Put pressure on this pawn. As the position simplifies more, let's, let's just guard him. I, I like him enough to guard him. I don't think he's expendable. Maybe that was a better way to say it. Um, so as the position simplifies a bit more, I've noticed the queen on one of these four center squares tends to be a very, very good piece. Now, I think, oh, I'm not afraid of that discovered check. I'll just drop back. Or maybe consider this. Yeah, I'll just drop back. Or I don't know. I'm not sure. To be announced on that one. To be announced. I'm still not afraid. Should I be? My queen's not getting trapped. Pawn push. I could block now. But, um... I'm not going to do that. I think I'm fine where I'm at. And let's take like this. And hopefully there's not going to be a mate on h1. <laughs> I should be much faster. Rook here. Okay, let me... Let me take this pawn and defend f2. Okay, f2, I need to babysit. And my queen is the babysitter. Not the best babysitter around. I just want to trade queens. Rook here, I also want to throw a pig on that 7th rank. Okay, I'm okay with this, because now it relieves some pressure. Relieves some pressure on f2. And now I want to pinpoint this. This pawn is in a pin. I'm up a pawn, and I would just want to grab this guy. Rook e4 and d4 to pile up. If, if we're going to have something like this, black is putting themselves in a pin. So rook here, well, still, even with rook here. Even with rook here, I had this d4 move. So this is an instance of attacking a pinned piece or pawn. Exploiting the pin. I have all my bases covered. A3, F2, and my last decision will be to take with the rook or the pawn, and I believe I'll just take with the rook, welcoming more exchanges instead of trying to get a this guy rolling. I want to have activity with pieces along the E-file. And I am perfectly okay with the queen trade. This is a one king and pawn endgame, should that have happened. Let's take the pawns over here. And I like, well, I'm just going to grab him. No, I'm just going to go after this pawn. Oh, my opponent's starting to fly. Let's get back over here. Sneak my king up. Maybe throw that check in. No, they're going to do that first. Drive that king back. Get my pawns up. Get these guys rolling. Keep going. And then look for check here. Oh, they were being sneaky. Let me be sneaky back. Oh, hang on. <laughs> oh, that would have been steal me. <laughs> Can you imagine the scream? Imagine it. Imagine that scream. Look at it. 
I had it. I had. I was hovering over it. <laughs> Rook takes pawn. Stalemate. Ah, oh. good game. All right, let's go back and quickly see where either one of us could have improved. Okay. Tough game. Wow. Interesting middle game sequence. It got very critical. I wonder. I wonder about. Um, if you are going to part with the bishop, I one one thing that comes to mind for me is: is there a, a way to do it under more favorable circumstances? Like, um, like is it is it worthwhile to insert first a five? This might be a, a subtle but important point. If you play a five and I insist, I I want to like throw a question to the bishop. Then, um, then if you take and I recapture, I think a4 could turn out to be a nice lockdown on the b3 square. And then there might be new possibilities for knight a6 to c5 to b3. It's just something to look into with regard to the pawn structure and exploiting potential holes in the white position a5 and make me weaken my b3 square if I'm going to kick the bishop away. Um, it, it's a time waster, so that's that's the thing you'd have to weigh. Is it worth the time to grant uh, yourself maybe the b3 square? But you just capture right away, and I have the bishop pair. And again, I think at this point I was saying maybe I should move my rook so that this move would fail, I'm pretty sure, to a knight move, exploiting the bishop on b7 being unprotected, as well as the pawn on e6. But we didn't go in that direction. Didn't quite have that. I'm needing to recapture on g2. And uh, I guess, I don't know. <laughs> Only the computer is going to be able to sort this one out for sure. This got really crazy. I got ambitious going after the weak point. He can't move after queen e3, because again, f5. Knight g4, queen here. Now he's have a check, and maybe I, a, a knight retreat. I think it should be okay or not. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Nice in between moves. Nice in between moves. Not reacting to the threat right away. If you did play knight a4, I, th I was going to play bishop c3. But here, wins a pawn temporarily. Maybe there was something better. It's easy to miss the different knight moves. And uh, this advance, I'm still going here. So I believe I do get that pawn back. Huh. I'm not sure what else to really recommend. I don't know if, I, if I've even recommended anything. <laughs> I just pointed out possibilities for a5 and a4 earlier, but... It was a tough game, um, as is usually the case with Benko G. Yeah, these, I think, well, it's already, my queen is in a good spot, and it's tough. You can't contest the C file so easily, because you're tethered to this pawn's defense. I wonder if King F7, in this, in this endgame where I think it's, a lot clearer that I'm, I'm just better in, in this endgame because of my queen's strong position. I wonder if you can do something like king here. Have your king be the one who's responsible for watching e6, and then you have to try and get control over the c file. Or not get control, but at least negate the influence I have over um, over the c file. If you could envision the position with the king on f7, and both sets of rooks exchange off the board, which is likely, since there's only one open file. I don't know if it would be enough for my, my... I don't know if my queen's position would be good enough. Your queen could always play to d7, and you're guarding your base points. be a much more difficult struggle. Maybe, maybe this is something. Although, no, 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 you can't do it right away. <laughs> you can't do it right away because of rook c7. So there goes that idea. Maybe... No, you can't even do it now. Maybe right now, instead of queen b7, rook c8 at this moment, 
contest it right now and then think about rook here or yeah rook here king here in that that idea yeah doing it out doing it one move later it's it's not quite working in fact why didn't i play here right now oh man look at the things i'm missing rook c2 <laughs> how stupid how stupid i played here for a reason not to just stare along this file but to go to squares in your territory rook c7 man oh okay <laughs> another reason why um queen here was not good but i did not take advantage of that did it did i did it or did i i'm tongue-tied all of a sudden as well or maybe not all of a sudden maybe i've just been all all along <laughs> Oh, I'm just turning my head to the right looking at the Twitch chat and it's going bonkers saying, finally, finally, he sees it. He's been babbling for hours. Okay. Ugh. Missed opportunity. I don't think I gave it away, but there was certainly a much cleaner approach. The Rook Endgame is winning, 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 and I'm glad to have not grabbed that pawn. I'm pretty sure I was hovering over it, just ready to unclick, followed by... A scream. I avoided that. Okay. Good game, Benko G.